Hey guys, Doubt here, and in this video, we're going to be doing the first episode of a series called Is It OP? And as you can see right now, we have the most stereotyped, overpowered vehicle in game, the T-34-85. This is the D model, by the way. I haven't gotten to the regular model yet, but I don't see the difference from here. Anyway, so how the series works is that, you know, I take a vehicle that people say is overpowered or or say, say is underpowered and I compare it to the other tank sets tier, see how it matches up against them and some gameplay and let you know my opinions on it. Now, first of all, looking at the T-34E5, we can see the armor. 45 in the front, 60 degree angle, 45 on the sides, and it says 90 degrees, but it looks more like, I don't know, 60 maybe? Seems like more Maybe 70, probably just as model correctly. And at the front, we have 90, 90 millimeters. And as we go here, it's more and more effective. And then the sides, we got 75, back 52. And probably want to watch, of course, our sides. We want to keep it angled so that, because with the cheeks, if we keep it, I'll show you in game, but what you kind of want to do sometimes is if the armor is not too great on the front, or in general, if you turn the turret back and forth like this, you can mess up their aim and hopefully if they shoot you have a chance of balancing and sides most likely I'm guessing we're gonna eat up a lot of shrapnel in our fuel which is fine considering the alternative is the ammo and if what well, we're gonna do be doing this round as well we're gonna be taking this many less rounds so all of it's down here and that way if we get shot in the turret, we don't get ammo wrecked. Now on to the other nations. For comparison, I'm going to use the EZ-8, I believe this is. I forgot to mention, T-34 round stock is 142 millimeters penetration, and it's armor-piercing, high-explosive ballistic capped, and as soon as that enters the tank, they're pretty much done. Anyway, armor. So you have from the front, you know, around 63.5. If you're looking on straight on, it's more like 80, 90 at some parts. And down here, it gets all the way up to 100. And so just don't shoot around here. Your best bet is this upper plate. Or if you have enough penetration, you could get through the gun manlet. And sides, once again, easy to shoot. I always have the philosophy that when you shoot at a tank from the side, your best bet to one shot is directly beneath the turret. And if so, you can also aim a little bit to the front. And hopefully what that does is allows you to shrapnel right in the middle here and knock them out, you either take out their ammo or kill all of the crew, but one of the safest ones though, you aim for the turret, you get that kin breach, the gunner, and so they can't fire back at you for a while. So we're going to also take a look at the jumbo, oh, oh yeah, and 
for the ammo on this one. The stock round, 127 millimeters, arm piercing cap, ballistic cap. It's got good shrapnel. And one second. And go to the jumbo. It's classified as a heavy, but you know, based off the Sherman. We actually have less armor on this front plate here. But what it makes up for is if you couldn't shoot at this part before, you definitely can't now. It goes up to 400 down there. And so sides, we have we have thicker armor on the sides than the other Sherman does at the front. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Front on the other Sherman is 63.5. And the turret, it gets even to be that when you flank this from the side, it becomes questionable to shoot at the turret be just from the armor. And mantlet, very thick. And stock round, that's one of the, the faults of this. 75 millimeter gun and standard round AP, 110 millimeters. And that will be the lowest penetration of the tanks we're going to look at today. And the Germans are a little bit more tricky considering they have the jump from 4.3 to 5.7 in the medium tanks department. So on the firepower of this, 136 and armor, very flat, but it's got 80 millimeters. Also right here. And sides, these more are when I play the the side armored Panzer variants, those are more against say the Crusader AA that that can buy you some extra seconds to turn the gun over and shoot at them. And armor on this really isn't that good. Being a 4.3, hard to compare with the T-3485. Now the Panther D, significantly more. You have thicker armor. You have, well the sides are a little bit worse, but if if you get flanked from the sides, unless you're in the Jumbo or the Tiger, chances are you're not going to survive. So, mantlet's pretty good though. Nice effective thickness. About over 100 most parts. And the ammunition on this is also the best we're going to be looking at. 187 millimeters of penetration with a ballistic cap shell. So that's going to go through, it's going to explode and destroy everything. And the Firefly, this will be the last one, the second greatest ammunition being for stock 160 millimeters and it's an AP round. You have about 87 or around 90 millimeters of effective effect, blah, 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 effective thickness and around here a little bit worse than the other ones only around 50 or 60 effective thickness sides 38 58 50.8 and 76 the gun is what makes up for this instead of the uh, armor on the Firefly. And anyway, let's get to battle and see how she does. By the way, a link to the skin will be in the description below. It is called Crocodile, and I think it looks really good. Not sure it's historical, but looks cool. Anyway, on to battle. All right, here we are in the first battle on Eastern Europe. I think 
Yeah, let's let's go down the center. I'm very optimistic or what would be the word? What would be the word for the feeling? I can't think of it right now. But I fear with this tank I can do a live commentary, which has been a little lacking on, on my channel. Because it seems to be whenever you're trying to record, you get the worst matches, you can't talk when you're playing, and everyone seems to have a grudge to kill you and ruin the video. And that's why I went with replays for a while. But with this one, this tank, I feel confident enough, there's a word, confident enough to be able to talk and get some good gameplay. I have to check the wiki after, with uh, when this year, when this is introduced, but when it when it fights, uh, I think it's the tiger players that have a a special grudge against this tank, being that it has almost the same caliber gun and got better mobility and. If I remember, this is 1943, 1944, and the Tiger was supposedly 1942. Just gonna watch around the corner. And if this match doesn't go well, I think I'll also show a battle I had recently in this, a replay, where I got 10 kills, and just to show you how I think this tank was, how this tank is more casual than most of the others in the game. So, I feel that playing this game, playing this tank in sort of a more casual way, you can still be on par with players that are trying a bit harder than that. And if you're feeling, you know, more dedicated to playing it, that you're playing more aggressively, then this, this definitely does very good. Over here? No. Over there? They're shooting at each other from the looks of it. So we have a guy coming down here. Oh, that's a tiger. We do not want to peek out at him. So, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go around this corner. Hopefully, he doesn't try and push up. It's gonna run this way. Because it looks like most of our team is pushing to the left. It's always good to go with the flow. And he. Oh. Come on. Come on. Roll, 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 roll. Roll, roll, roll your tank. Gently down the street. Team's covering us from behind, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. Tiger pushing up. Keep my focus over here. Uh, there's a Sherman. Come on, come over here. Come in play. Come to play. Uh. Yeah, I don't have my fire extinguishers. That's a little sad. Alright, so... This is actually a replay, a different replay. I forgot to save the one where I got 10 kills, so... I spent most of this afternoon trying to get some good gameplay. And... 
Yeah. When I when I first got the T thirty four eighty five, I did not think it was anything special. Every match, at least when it was stock, because every match I played, I would I was always getting one shot. Or rather, I'd be disabled by a shot, and then I'd keep on going, where I'd just die. Is what I'm trying to say. So I have a bit of an allergy, so if you hear me snuffling, that's why. Anyway, so this game, gonna go to B, but I can see this guy in front of me. He's probably gonna get there first, and. So I decide my strategy, rather than follow him in, is I'm going to flank around to see if I can catch him off guard. And so, I might as well say in this replay, uh, the answer to the question, is the T-34 OP? And... In my, in my mind, the answer is yes and no. And yes, it has a good gun, good mobility, good armor, but the thing is, is that the community and the vehicle itself have given the players who did it a feeling of invincibility, and I think that's what catches on that M18 over there. Remember, this is a realistic battle, so I I can't see the tags. I try and shoot, and I catch them on fire, so my teammate can deal with them easier. So you can see right now, but when I was rolling in, all I saw was this firefly roll up. He sees me too. He misses, hits the ground, and I was able to. You see that angle, and I was able to get him, and then he shoots me, bounces, I one shot him, and now that Hellcat's dead, so I can keep on going through, and effectively that's the horn me pushed to B, was stopped by me and who the other guy was, I think that's a KV-2, that's behind me, let me check. Yeah, it looks like it. That, yeah, it's a, that's KB2. So I can see him rolling up to B. I'm not going to waste time. And instead, I'm going to push up. And this is what, where more comes in about the feeling of invincibility. Because you saw back there, I was able to... I bounced one shot, but the second guy who shot at me missed. And I was able to one-shot both of them. And I disabled the Hellcat, so... When you get that as, uh, when you're playing the game, you know, it feels like you can't be stopped. And so you keep on pushing through, pushing through, and then eventually you either meet someone better than you in front of you or to the rear, like you'll, you'll see getting into this. So in terms of the vehicle itself, I'd say it, it's kind of OP. Though, I, I know some in the community that would say more, say less about it, and like I said, when a vehicle gets to a certain point of power and a reputation, that kind of washes off on the players who use it. You know, they feel that they're always going to win, and... they're gonna kill everyone and no one's gonna kill them and so you get things like what I'm doing I'm pushing up into the spawn and I'm looking around but I'm looking to my front and right and I'm not looking to my left because I, I thought their spawn is so far away doesn't really matter and you can tell from it that pretty soon it is gonna matter yeah so Rolling up, and of course I'm expecting to 
be attacked from over there. So I only need the gun there, watch on my other side. And I got killed by a Hellcat coming out this side. And so I, I want to address this on this first episode of the series that the idea of being OP seems to be a bit more overused than it really should be. And, you know, a vehicle may be strong in one regard, say, KV-2. It has a big gun, but that comes at flaws of turret traverse and speed, so it may be good at one thing, but not so good at another. And if someone's able to counter that, you know, using a fast vehicle, flanking around, getting shots in on it, then it's not as OP as someone would claim. But that's kind of the point of this series, in my opinion, that we take something that's said to be OP and then break down what the faults are. For example, the T-34, we were killed by a side shot, whereas when we were coming at them head on, we were able to get two kills that match. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments down below what vehicle you think is overpowered or underpowered. Could end up in next episode. But leave a like if you enjoyed. Remember to subscribe.